How is it that sensitivity has now become a form of soft despotism? Well, sensitivity is letting other people's reactions to you decide your behavior. So in, instead of choosing to do what you think is right and then defending it, you say something or try out something or listen to other people demand something and um, r try to adapt to that. So instead of when the students yeah. chant, hey, hey, ho, ho, Western yeah. Civ has got to go, and the prof yeah. professoriate, which has dedicated its life to Western civilization, says, if it has to go, it has to go. Yeah. That's sensitivity. Uh, exactly, yeah. Now, why is it that Tocqueville wouldn't have been surprised to find the worst of it in the halls of the intellect? Because it is something that begins as an intellectual proposition, the proposition that we don't really run our own lives, but we are victims or puppets of large historical forces beyond our control. Mm. I'll quote you again. Being sensitive to blacks and women, we're talking about life on campus now, gave them the right to be offended when they pleased, and they were encouraged to react with indignation whenever they felt put upon. Thus, the notion of sensitivity led to less toleration rather than more. Those not tolerated were, of course, conservatives. Close yes. quote. Yeah. Less toleration rather than more. Well, because uh, it's... Um, um, and you, you start off by demanding toleration and then uh, understand toleration as agreeing with you or making you feel welcome or making you feel uh, or in, in, making you feel that you agree or that you're in agreement the two of you so it becomes a demand that the person who's tolerating actually uh, take measures to prevent the other fellow from uh, the person, the, the victim, <laughs> from right, feeling right. bad. And this led to the proliferation of speech codes on campuses yeah. in the 90s and early 2000s, yeah. where the notion was you shouldn't say anything that would make anyone else feel uncomfortable. How do you know it would make them feel uncomfortable? They say they're uncomfortable. Yes. And so it submerges true. the standard into a purely subjective. Yeah, and it encur encourages people to say, I feel uncomfortable. Right. Because they, that's a way of grasping yeah, power. They pick out certain things to say. Now, for example, black students. I was once accused of saying, you people. Well, that's a phrase which is sometimes uh, used, I suppose, to refer disparagingly to a group of blacks. But you people. So they pick on, that, on, that, on what they take to be sort of signals in, um, in, in other people's speech and interpret it as uh, malign, a kind of malevolence on the, on the part of the speaker. Right. And so what, in the second half of that quotation, what I find so striking is that, of course, those not tolerated were, of course, conservatives. We hear over and over and over again yeah. that the reason there are more uh, people to the left in faculty than conservatives is that, well, that's just not the kind of life that attracts conservatives. They'd rather go make money on Wall Street or they'd rather go into the military. Probably not very many liberals in the military are there. So it's just the way things, p human beings sort themselves out. And in this, of course, you're saying not a bit of it. There is an active animus against conservatives on campus. Is that correct? Yes, the people who put toleration first are intolerant of those who don't put toleration first. If you have any kind of principle, or live, try to live by any kind of principle, then toleration is not the most important thing in your life. But by, by persuasion, or, for, or doing the right thing and persuading other people to agree with you, or at least to tolerate you. Uh, so, uh, they, they, but the, uh, the liberals have often, uh, uh, or, or typically, uh, taken um, choice as, as, as an, and, 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 and a demand for toleration of uh, uh, infinite choice as uh, the, their principle when in fact uh, the difficulty is which choice should you make? They'll tell you, what, Harvey. Which, which, which principle should you use? Right. By which uh, one final time, let me quote you to yourself. 
and he, he, I have to say, this is just outrageous for you to say this, Harvey, the way you do. Conservatism is closer to the mission of the university than liberalism is. Conservatives are more tolerant than liberals, close quote. Now, I've asked you to explain yourself a number of times. This is one case in which I'd ask you to defend yourself. <laughs> Yes, uh, conservatives are more tolerant because conservatives don't expect that liberalism is going to disappear, whereas liberals expect that conservatism will disappear. And that's because they think that conservatism is based on superstition or prejudice, something that isn't in, uh, necessary to uh, human life and that, well, is, is, and that can easily be dispensed with. So there's no excuse, therefore, for a conservative to remain conservative. Once he's enlightened, once he's uh, seen the truth, then he'll abandon his view. But conservatives, I think, have, don't have that illusion. They, they know that there will always be the left. Right. And that uh, it will come back in one form or another, and that our, our politics consists of a kind of alternation between left and right. And, and they're more, much more tolerant of, um, of people who disagree with and them. Conservatism is closer to the mission of the university. How? Uh, I, yeah, that's because the mission of the university should be to open minds and not to close them. It should be not to be, it shouldn't declare that certain people are prejudiced and shouldn't be listened to and can be easily dismissed. That's the way of political correctness, and that's not the way of a proper university. Professor Harvey Mansfield, a Harvard man since 1953? 1949. 1949, excuse me, since matriculating, not since yeah. graduating, since 1949. The author of countless books, including Manliness and Just Out, Tocqueville, which I actually am going to put this one in my pocket and give myself a refresher course in Tocqueville on my vacation this week. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. A pleasure. We'll have to reconvene and talk about Tocqueville next time. I'm Peter Robinson for Uncommon Knowledge and the Hoover Institution. Thanks for joining us.